For the longest time, I've always wanted to have my own home theater, but this always seemed like such a daunting task. I didn't want to have to do a big renovation on our home. I didn't want to be knocking down walls and building new ones. I wanted to make do with an existing space and an empty wall. And my friends, if you've been following along with the build here on the channel, you know it's finally done. Throughout this build, we've made our plans, we've installed a screen, we've ran our wiring, we've installed in-ceiling and in-wall speakers, we've built our own AV rack, and more. How did the final system all come together, and what are some valuable lessons that I learned along the way? Welcome, let's do a full overview of the complete home theater build. So before we start looking at all the different gear, I do want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor for these videos, Crutchfield. Those of you that watch my car audio content know that I use Crutchfield all the time for my car audio projects. Their vehicle selector tool allows us to pick perfect gear for our vehicle and their customer service is always incredible. Personally, I've used Crutchfield for many years long before I ever started the YouTube channel and I knew that when I did eventually get around to making a home theater, I was going to want to use them for that as well. One of the Crutchfield advisors, Paul, carefully listened to my goals for this system and helped me pick out exactly what I needed for this project and he knocked it out of the park. I could not be more happy with how everything that I'm gonna show you came together. If you are putting together your own home theater, their advisors can definitely help you out as well. If you'd like, you can check them out and get a special offer at the link down in the video description. So first things first, let's talk about this projector. So this is the Epson Home Cinema Projector. It is native in 1080p resolution, but it does have a technology built in called Pixel Shift, which allows it to have a 4K input source into it, and it does display that higher resolution. The image quality on this projector is insane. It has a high dynamic range, the colors are very vibrant, they really pop, and even the blacks look nice and dark. With a light output of 2600 lumens, it is bright enough that I don't have to worry about the light coming in from the windows, but after all, it is a projector, so we definitely need to turn off the lights that are near the screen. The projector mount is made by a company called Chief. I definitely recommend getting a good projector mount. A good projector mount is going to give you a lot more flexibility so that you can perfectly align this with your screen and get everything nice and level. I've been very happy with that mount. So the projector, of course, also needs a screen to display on. So in this case, we've got a Screen Innovations 120 inch zero edge screen. This screen has the white fabric and you can see the zero edge gives us this very, very thin band around the outside there. It has a really nice refined look and I made a full video about the installation and assembly and how I lined everything up, how I mounted it on the wall. That's all here on the channel. As of right now, the surround sound for this system is a 5.1.2 system. For the front left and right speakers, we went with this absolutely beautiful Focal Aria floor standing speaker. These have a one inch aluminum magnesium inverted dome tweeter, a six and a half inch mid range, and then three six and a half inch woofers. The frequency response on these is from 28 kilohertz all the way down to 39 hertz. We obviously have a subwoofer for this system to handle the bass, but these can play mid bass with absolute authority, having the three woofers and the ported enclosure. You may recognize the flax cone from some of their car audio speakers. That flax cone is so unique. I really like the way it looks. I feel like it actually matches the aesthetic of having hard wood flooring really, really well. Other design details here, you'll notice that behind the speaker grill, these have this really nice leather, and then on the sides and top, it's this gloss piano black look. Even with the grill installed, these look extremely refined. I've paired the right and left floor standing speakers with the matching center channel speaker. These speakers sound absolutely incredible, so lifelike. If you just sit here and listen to a song with strong vocals and close your eyes, it sounds like the artist is right there in front of you performing. Now, I also built this bar, and over here, here behind the bar, we did add a second zone, and this zone also features those Aria bookshelf speakers. If you're not familiar with zones, I definitely recommend going back and checking out the video that I made about the 
the different zones for this theater here on the channel. So along with the front stage, I also went with Focal for all of the surround speakers. These are obviously the ceiling speakers here. These also have that flax cone. And what I really like about Focal's design for their in-ceiling and in-wall speakers is the design of their mounting brackets. These were extremely easy to install. It's really as simple as just cutting the right hole size and then using that bracket. And that bracket is designed and engineered so well that the speaker snaps into it perfectly. The same can be said for the in-wall speakers where you just cut a hole in your drywall and those snap right into place as well. Obviously the front stage is important for a home theater but just as important is you want to be completely immersed in the sound so you have to have those surround sound speakers we've got the back left the back right and then of course those two Atmos speakers up in the ceiling as well. For our subwoofer, we went with this here. This is a JL Audio 10 inch E-Sub. You can see that it also has that nice black gloss finish. This matches the Focal Arias really, really well. A few highlights here, this is a 1200 watt subwoofer. And you can see it has this nice little access plate right here that's held on with magnets that gives us access to our master volume level and our crossover controls and polarity. The extreme low end extension for the bass on this subwoofer is absolutely mind boggling. The depth that it adds to movies and the excitement it adds to music are so enjoyable. Definitely a valuable addition to the rest of the system. For powering all these speakers and sending a signal to the projector, I wanted to have an AV rack in a separate room. This AV rack, first of all, holds our receiver, which is made by Marantz. This receiver has 9.2 channel capability, which gave me the ability to add extra zones, and I can even have some further expansion in the future if I look to upgrade and add more surround sound speakers. With the ability to output 8K resolution, I'm also ready for those future formats. I have a dedicated Blu-ray player that I'm using as a source to send signal into the receiver, and then out of the receiver I have signal going to three different two-channel amplifiers that are powering the system. This is all mounted in a Sanus 55-inch tall AV rack. Again, if you guys want to see the full build on that rack and all this gear coming together, I have a separate video here on the channel. So what are some lessons I feel like I've learned from doing this project? Well, first off, you always hear about all these rules of thumb. The same thing kind of happens in car audio. There's all these rules. An example being when we're sitting here in our viewing position, there's a formula that's determined by the distance you are from the screen, the max screen size that you should use. Now, technically, based on the distance that I am, from the wall, I should have used a slightly smaller screen. But this is something that I actually learned from my Crutchfield advisor, Paul. He recommended that we actually go with a little bit bigger screen since I told him that my personal viewing preference is to be fully immersed. I like to sit a little bit closer when I go to an actual movie in the movie theater. I like to have that screen filling up my full field of view. And in this case, I am super glad that I went with this much larger screen because it fulfills what I like as a preference. So just remember that sometimes these so-called rules of thumb are not hard set rules. You can break them depending on what your personal preference is. Next lesson learned, definitely consider adding the height speakers if you are building your own home theater. To me, having those two additional speakers up in the ceiling makes the experience, especially when it comes to the surround sound when you're watching action movies it makes it so so much better you can hear all those little details up above you as you're watching my final lesson learned pay just as much attention to the little things that are part of a build as you do the big things so of course everyone pays attention to the speakers and the subwoofer and the projector and the receiver but you want to pay attention to the little aspects of your build as well things like quality wiring and an av rack those are important things but also little things like an IR repeater. That infrared receiver that I installed into the wall is such a huge quality of life improvement for this home theater. The fact that I don't have to ever go into the other room to adjust anything and I can easily adjust everything just by aiming the remote at that. It's a huge deal. Also having the speaker terminal plates that I can simply plug each speaker into on the wall. I just feel like that gives such a nice clean presentation. 
Again, it's those little things that can really take your build to the next level. One of the great things about a home theater is how easy it is to swap gear in and out. So in the future, I'd like to try DIY building some of my own home theater speakers. I'm also looking forward to being able to review and test different home audio gear. So amplifiers and receivers, definitely looking forward to that. Overall, I feel that installing a home theater into your home can be one of the best investments that you can really make into your home when it comes to entertainment. We've been having a blast having a ton of family movie nights and just being able to sit back and relax and be immersed in your favorite music, not only in the car, but also while at home. It's just the best feeling. Now don't forget, if you are looking to build your own home theater, definitely check out Crutchfield. Their home theater experts are great at answering questions and they can definitely help you out with a project, whether it's big or small. A big thanks to them for being a sponsor of the channel. If you guys wanna learn more and take advantage of a special offer, check out that link down in the video description. Thank you for tuning in and checking out the build. I'll see you guys in the next video.